Yes, yes, everybody, and welcome to High on Homegrown, the cannabis podcast from Percy'sGrowRoom.com. I am Mackie from the UK, and joining us this week, we have Marge. Hello, everyone. This is Marge, and I'm still in Berlin, Germany, living the life. And I'm living also the dream. still hosting Bite Me the Show about edibles. No, you haven't found a replacement yet, no? No, no. not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you looking for one? Well, no, but... Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yes, and also, back from the eclipse, we have Monkey Do. Hey, everybody. Monkey here, back with unburned eyes, but I did see what I went to see. Eclipse is very cool. Hope everybody yes. had a, has a, a, something nice to smoke today, and here we go. We're going to do a show. Yes, unburned thanks. For, <laughs> uh, unburned eye. <laughs> you would not believe everybody because we had been cautioned so much on the news about what be careful when you're looking at and, and my daughter actually went out and got the good glasses and the little kind mm -hmm. with the rating on them and everything like that so we yeah. knew they were good but still because you know when you get warned about something so many times and it's drilled into the back of your heads everybody was was kind of still a little bit afraid to stare at the eclipse for too long even with the glasses on so but you, like, you oh, can oh. see, you can look at the eclipse once the moon has covered the sun for a yes. few minutes, can't you? And then you, you, can, you, you put the glasses right. back on before the, uh, the diamond ring comes along. Right. The, uh, the totality happens in which you get what's called Bailey's beads on the outside of the moon, which is kind of like a, a glittery kind of a white sheen around. It looks like a halo kind of a thing. And yes, mm -hmm. you can view that. We had about a minute and a half of totality that we could do that where we were. Nice. And then after that, as soon as the diamond ring starts coming out, you need to shield your eyes again. Though the diamond mm -hmm. ring is where it breaks. It really does look like a diamond ring. It's very cool. Yeah. And, and that's where it's really fucking bright. That's where you can really mess up your eyes if you're looking at that. Yeah, so don't be, do that. Because you, you're going from nighttime to instantaneous bright. So mm -hmm. you really have to be How careful. How dark did it get? Um, it was weird. As it started getting dark, uh, birds actually started chirping and singing and flying into trees. And really? when it got dark, the birds actually got quiet. It was very strange. Uh, it didn't get, I'd say it was twilight. It wasn't, it wasn't sundown. It was twilight. Right. Is a good way to okay. put it. Um, because you, got, you have to remember, you, your light is still bleeding in from, from all the horizons. I mean, right. it's yeah, only, it's, it's, uh, it's sundown everywhere around you. So it was very interesting. I've never experienced anything like that. And may do it again who knows yeah very cool very cool the next one is in spain northern spain 2026 so let's get a percy's party together for that one huh <laughs> oh, yeah i'm sure anybody is always wanting to go to spain you know what i'm saying yeah man good time august in spain northern spain in Ooh. august oh what are the temperatures going to be like oh yeah maybe that uh, might be a bit too much <laughs> could be brutal <laughs> but yeah so here we are with the cannabis news and events this week we i think we have eight stories to be covering today so we've got a lot to get to i'll tell you about some of these that we're going to be talking about we have this tv show called come dine with me here in the uk it's an absolute piece of shit but uh a couple of the people who won that apparently are getting uh sent to prison for importing a shitloads of cannabis and trying to interrupt with rishi sunak's friends fucking company but yeah we'll get to that when we get to the news article of course uh the police arrest international gang and listen to this ridiculous amount of money, everybody, right? $686 million medical cannabis scam. $686 million. Damn. That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah, it is money. And it's all it was. If, if I read it, read that article right, we'll have to go through that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Gala Shields. I don't know. This is a place in the UK. Uh, five appear in court over 2.3 million cannabis haul. Seems like, you know, just powers in significance of the last one. But that was sent in by one of the listeners from NEM. So quick shout out to NEM out there. Thanks for sending in the article, man. We have zombie drug xylazine. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, found in cannabis THC vapes in the UK. So, yeah, uh, shocking. But we'll cover that when we get to it, of course. Uh, March has got some stories here. We've got uh, cannabis may be banned at Germany's Oktoberfest despite legalization. Oh, I'd, no. Yeah, I'd like to see that happen. Whatever, bro. <laughs> you know, a, the, the dragon is already out the box, man. You're not getting it back in. Uh, okay. And also, can smoking cannabis cause kidney stones? Uh, some kind of article and a study that we'll be looking at when we get there. And Monkey has one here. So experts, deta sorry, expert 
details why cannabis won't be legalized in Australia as countries around the globe continue to allow the drug. And FDA head says there's no reason for the DEA to delay rescheduling cannabis. And I think that's very obtuse because there is a reason they're all being paid off. But we'll get to that. <laughs> yes, oh, sure. so, sorry. Sorry. sorry, I don't mean to use uh, complex words there, everybody. You no, know I, I like, don't it. like that. Enjoy it. Obtuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that scene, scene from fucking Shawshank Redemption? That's for a minute. Why are you being so obtuse? <laughs> okay, that's the word of the day. We're going to fit this word into the conversation as many times as we that's can. That's right, everybody. Oh, word of the day. A new section of the show was starting this week for <laughs> a couple of weeks <laughs> until we forget about it again. All right. <laughs> until it becomes obtuse. <laughs> yeah, so a quick shout out there to everybody in the chat who's come to join us as well. Don't forget to hit that like button if you haven't done that yet. And if you want to partake in the chat as well, you have to be subscribed. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share it as well if you can, but of course, no pressure. You no pressure to share it. We know some people are not in a position where they can be sharing cannabis content because if their mom sees that on the Facebook feed, she's going to be very disappointed in you. So don't share if it's going to get you in trouble. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's all the news stories we're going to be covering. Some interesting stuff. Looking forward to getting stuck in. But what are we smoking on this week? I just have my same old usual shit. Waste of time even answering. It's the Sasquatch, Sam Squatch. Mm -hmm. That that one again, man. It's so delicious as well. God damn, it's delicious. Mm -mm. But yeah, we, what, what did you get, Marge? You you saw our friend out there, didn't you? Yeah, man, yeah. One of our just, buddies. Uh, it was. I just got some weed gifted to me, and I've just been trying to savor it because you know I didn't get nice. a ton, but it was gifted, so it was like much appreciated. So I've been saving mm -hmm. it. I do have my packs packed and ready to go. Yeah, how much? Uh, how how much longer are you in Germany for? About three weeks. Uh, what day is it today? The fourteen. Another month. Oh wow! Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I hope you're having a good time, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What What are you saying, monkey? What are you smoking on today? I've got some Gruber Hans right now. I'm gonna try. Oh, cool. And pop this up in the vaporizer to say and see how this rides. Mm -mm. That'd be cool. Yes, sir. Yeah, Marge, what are you saying about you? You're not very far away. You're coming to the UK. Chilbert just asked, it, well, said here, come to the UK anytime. Are you, are you <laughs> going to visit? Are you going to come see the UK? Uh, I don't know if I am. I know I'm going to. No, I, know, I know I'm a little bit biased, but, you know, it's better than Germany, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There goes our German audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here for too long. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's cool. And have you been speaking German while you're over there? Yeah, a little bit, but sometimes people hear me talk and then they switch to English. You yeah, see, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> man, I've been doing this uh, learning Chinese thing, learning Mandarin for a while now. I'm on like 306 days or something, and I know quite a bit. And I went to Lego Club with my boy, and there's a Chinese family there. And I'm like, God. and but the thing is, it can come across as really fucking racist. If I just go up to them and be, be like, Nisho Zong Wenma, <laughs> and they're not even Chinese, be, <laughs> right. you know, it's because there could be Vietnamese, there could be Japanese, you know, there could be um, like Chinese but speak Cantonese rather than Mandarin. And I just right. don't want to, I just don't want to be that guy who just comes across like that, man. <laughs> but I, I, I asked the lady, I was like, Excuse me, are you from China? She's like, Yeah, from China. I'm like, Do you speak? Mandarin, she's like, yeah, I'm like, cool. I've been learning Mandarin for nearly a year. Help me for a second. I just said some stuff to her. And she's like, yeah, I understand you. It's like, ah, oh, sweet. She can understand what I'm saying. That's cool. Yeah, it hasn't been that bad here, but obviously Germans speak uh, very quickly. <laughs> it mm -hmm. would be much nicer if everyone like spoke very slowly. That would really help me out. But <laughs> you know, yeah, it's it doesn't very cool. work like that. Yeah, it's fun learning another language. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I just hope it becomes useful to me at some point. <laughs> you right. know, if I can actually speak to somebody and have a conversation in Mandarin, that would be very cool. But still, a couple of years away from that, I think. Uh, Firetap said, what made you pick Mandarin, Mackie? I like the way it sounds. Uh, I like the symbols. And, and it's uh, one of the most commonly spoken languages in the world. And China's going to be running the world in about 20 years. So start learning, everybody. <laughs> All right. I thought it was I thought it was down to Wayne's World, man. Come on now. What's what's on Wayne's World? He had learned, he learned Mandarin to try and impress his girlfriend. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But yes, it's good fun. I enjoy it. But anyway, that's a random tangent we're going on there. But yes, it's been a good week. Are we ready to move on to the news? Yeah. I think so. Let's do it then. Let's do it. I'm going to press the right button. Here we go. So where do we even begin? I've got it all lined up to be all in order like this because it's professional behind the scenes, everybody. You know what I'm saying? We have, uh, we're going to start here. Zombie drug xylazine found in cannabis THC vapes in the UK. Now, just in case you're all unaware, because we might not mention it every single week, but cannabis is still illegal here in the UK and THC vapes are not allowed. So these are all on the legacy market. And as we said many, many times before, these problems would pretty much go away altogether if cannabis was properly legalized and regulated in this country. But the government don't give a shit. So we're left with stupid stories like this. So let's uh, let's take a closer look at the article here. Let me uh, get the fucking... I, I don't know why it, it does these things sometimes. There we go. Now we're sorted. If the, the the window title isn't the one which I'm supposed to have on the Streamlabs, right? It then, if we move to the news article too early, it doesn't show it. I have to go back to the show notes, link it up again. And then it's, yeah, you don't know what I'm on about, really, do you? I'm just saying. It's a piss take, all right? <laughs> no, nobody does. Right? It's like, Streamlabs? What's a Streamlab? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, let's get into the meat of this here. We have people using cannabis THC vapes risk inhaling a very dangerous substance called xylazine, UK experts warn after discovering some confiscated products contained the quote-unquote zombie drug. The sedative designed to put big animals such as cows and horses to sleep can be lethal for humans. But come on. Water can be lethal for humans if you drink too much. What kind of dosage are we talking about? I mean, this this might seem quite appealing, really. <laughs> this, you know, designed to put big animals such as cows and horses to sleep. This reminds me of ketamine. You know, well, wasn't ketamine also a, a, a veterinary horse tranquilizer? Drug first? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but didn't some which celebrity just died from ketamine not that long ago? Oh, don't bring us on a downer here, March. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're We're talking about the joys of ketamine here, not the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I didn't even see that. I haven't uh, seen any news about that. Can you? Do you remember who? Uh, wasn't it one of the Friends characters? From oh, that was, TV show? oh man! What was that? Uh, ketamine was Perry. it? Matthew Perry. Matthew Perry. Well, Matthew they. Did, I think that they did say that they found ketamine in his system, but I thought it was from a therapy he was going through. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. Wow. You know, but, it's hard to say, but I mean, yeah. I don't think they were going to throw him under the bus, but just the fact that they had, that they weren't going to, you know, they, they were had to test it and make well, sure it was a drug I, thing. I reckon, so, I reckon he had something on the Clintons. All right. That's like... uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Another Clinton side. Okay. Random conspiracy for some, we can make it fit somewhere, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll find that things that link it all together and make it seem like it makes sense. But anyway, this uh, new story here. Um, it is alarming to find it in even a few illicit e-cigarettes that many think are pretty harmless, experts say. It puts people, as well as those who inject or take strong drugs, at risk. What the fuck does that even mean? It puts people, as well as those who inject or take strong drugs, at risk. If it's found in THC vapes... Well, how is it... it it's this is a, it sounds like it's AI written, you know, one of these things like that. It just didn't complete the thought there. You know, I yeah. understand yeah. that this stuff is in any drugs. It could be dangerous, but right now we're talking, you're right. We're, we're talking about THC say. vapes. How are you going to inject the THC yeah. vape? That's just stupid. Yeah. Jesus. But this continues here. The illegal global xylazine market has so far mostly seen it mixed with strong opioid drugs, such as heroin or fentanyl. Uh, there has been at least one xylazine related UK death already, and there are fears misuse could grow as it has in the US. Dr. Caroline Copeland from the colleagues from King's College London 
says new types of illicit xylazine products are now entering the UK market. As well as risky vapes, they found tablets being sold as cold codeine and diazepam or Valium that contained xylazine. What the fuck? I mean, yeah. I mean, in these, in that case, then, then the argument for legislation doesn't even work because surely these are, uh, nah, they would be sold on the on the internet or something. That's not, not going to be legitimate codeine yeah, diazepam no, from the NHS. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Right. But I mean, you can make the argument here though that if this THC vapes were legal and regulated and inspected, that we wouldn't be seeing this issue right now. No, that, yeah, that's hundred percent. Everything. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, we could, if it was government regulated and safe, everything would be pro no problem. Yeah. And this is the thing is uh we it wouldn't re like get rid of it completely, but it would take 99% of the cases uh, away. They would be gone. Everything would be much safer. Yeah, especially and, for something like THC vapes, man. I just that's mm -hmm. stupid that to even consider you having I mean, and I've, I've heard, already heard of the THC vapes in the states having fentanyl in them and things such mm -hmm. as this, the, the illicit ones. And so, I mean, just, it doesn't make any sense to keep it illegal if this is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and we say this every week, man. And it just seems like it. the only way for this to be safe, because it's happening anyway, as we're finding out every week, you know, people are taking illicit substances. And mm -hmm. sometimes people die as a result of that. If they were legalized and properly regulated, that would not happen as often. Lots of lives would be saved, but they just seem to ignore us. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll read some more of this. Uh, the researchers contacted all toxicology laboratories in the UK last year to gather evidence. They also looked at a drug testing result from halls seized by law enforcement. The findings are published in the journal Addiction. Although the numbers found were small, only two CA... <laughs> okay, now. Sorry, I, that that... Just knocked me off guard there. Let's go back. Although the numbers found were small, only two THC vapes and a small number of illegally sold pills out of tens of thousands of products, the experts say it is still extremely concerning. And it is, you know, but they're making it seem like it's in every fucking one of them. <laughs> How many yeah, THC right, vapes are sold in this country? That's reaper mm -hmm. madness right there. It's just basically mm -hmm. the using the same scare tactic to, to say, oh, I better not get that then because that's got the bad stuff in it. Yeah. Wow. And you know what they said? They found a couple in tens of thousands. So what percentage would that be? Point zero zero one. Zero 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 is yeah. a very small it, percentage. And it's still concerning, of course. You, you, know, oh, you don't want anybody dying but unknowingly taking this fucking shit, which was in a THC vape. That would be fucking bullshit but they're trying to label it and this is from the bbc as well everybody should have mentioned that at that start so we can just move on now really because you know just take a pinch of salt drop it on there and be like oh yeah now now we know this just t fucking bull bullshit yeah but, but i mean if the government could provide a, a different channel saying okay these are the legal vapes right here and these have been mm -hmm. tested and and safe now now you have you have an answer that actually works here because you yeah. can give the people like i said people want the stuff they're going to mm -hmm. find it one way or another you should provide a good, clean, safe source. Yes. Or your I company agree. will be fined and prosecuted, just like everything else, man. Yeah. Or nearly so everything else. <laughs> uh, we also have cannabidol CBD is also a component of the cannabis plant, but does not give a high. A CBD oil included, including in vapes, is legal to sell in the UK. Dr. Copeland told BBC News people may not realize what they are actually buying. They think they are getting a THC vape, but it could also contain more, much more than they expect. You know, it could be, have a dose of ketamine in there or a ketamine light -like substance. Uh, it's really alarming. It is. So legalize, properly regulate and think about the safety of the consumer like you do with everything else. Mm -hmm. Food, seat belts, alcohol, everything, man. It, it just, you know, it, it, they're all, always worried about the safety of the consumer. Until you come to cannabis or any other drugs. And then, you know, good luck. You're on your own. Uh, the UK Advisory Council of the Misuse of Drugs recently recommended to the government xylazine be listed at a Class C drug. Oh, my gosh. Putting it in the same category as live and gas anabolic steroids and benzodiazepines, which would mean people possessing it could be jailed for two years and those dealing it for 14 years. But oh. 
Wait a minute. Well, what happens if you buy one of these vapes that's doped with it and they find out it's doped with it? Do you get the, the, the jail sentence here? You know, I'm uh, depends you know, on you're a... un unknowingly in possession of this stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say in a nice way, it depends on which social class you come from will uh, depend on said. which which the um, uh, in well, other words, can I, be. can I pay the <clears throat> mm -hmm. kindness fee to get off and be allowed mm -hmm. to continue my life? OK, yes. Anyway, the health risks are amplified when it is taken with other strong sedatives. It can cause difficulty breathing dangerously low blood pressure slow heart rate wounds can become infected <laughs> addiction and severe withdrawal symptoms and death it is not clear what level of harm inhaling it might do so oh god so they're making us like they've come up with this fear article here and again i'm not saying that anybody wants to be inhaling this shit but they're going on like it's it's in 50 percent of the vapes and it's killing everybody but they've just said here that it's they're not clear what level of harm inhaling it might do so it's not like people have died from smoking this stuff you know they might yeah. have been uh badly affected and had uh, a a bad time after unknowingly smoking it but they're going on like it's been killing people all over the country and it hasn't has it no i mean we can buy down where i live we can buy the hemp derived thc uh, vape sticks from all the vape stores and stuff like that and, and they're not regulated they're not regulated at all but i refuse to buy those and I refuse to use them because they're not regulated there's no testing there's there's no no information on on there you don't know components that are inside of it it's basically completely unregulated it's sold just like like a like candy would be almost uh they're not, they're they're less regulated than cigarettes even so right. the only time that i'll use a vape cart is if i buy it from an actual dispensary where i know it's good and it's clean and it's been tested yeah and i'm just funny like that but i mean mm -hmm. i don't use many vape carts maybe one a year if that uh yeah. but still you know it's one of those things like if you're going to use these things get them from a good source we have genetics, uh, genetics memory farms in the chat there, and he's bringing up some interesting points here. It says no ketamine is a dissociative, while psilocine is a tranquilizer. Different category and method of action. And he also mentions uh, even when inhaled, psilocine pulls in the joints and begins tissue necrosis. That Ooh. is the real zombie effect: open wounds and flesh decaying oh, on God. the body. Super gross stuff. Damn, I'm not going to read out any of your comments anymore, genetic memory no, farms. Jesus. No. Trigger warning, bro. It. Gosh. Exactly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if, that's that would have been in, if that would have been in the story right there, nobody would be buying that shit, you know? No, I mean, damn. Even if it is like two in a thousand, I'm not taking that <laughs> chance, you know? Right. <laughs> but, you know, you can make your own THE vapes, everybody, and then you know for sure that it's safe. So if that's something that you're interested in, grow your own cannabis, make your own THC e juice put it in the vape and you're good that's it you'll know everything that went in there everything <laughs> or just smoke some flour that's the easiest you know thing. Get, a, get a dry <laughs> herb Make some vaporizer. Edibles, you know just dry herb vaporizer man yeah. i love mine mm -hmm. by all means mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for sure all man. three of us use those things and they're, they're yeah. fantastic damn Agreed. right so i'll just finish this off here where where were we um it's not clear what in it, harm inhaling mm -hmm. it does. Uh, some children and teenagers in the UK have needed hospital treatment after they were thought to have used a vape spiked with another illegal drug spice. So again, they're saying this, like uh, the teenagers had to go to hospital needing treatment, but that wasn't because of this uh, xylazine stuff. This was because of spice. So they're just associating that. And in your head, it kind of makes you think that they've gone to hospital because, they, because of the xylazine. But it's not, again, they're just mixing up their words and twisting up the story to make it fucking fit their narrative bullshit king's college london institute of psychiatry psychology and neuroscience which is the longest title of any institution i've ever read uh, addictions head professor sir john strang who was not involved in the study said i wanted some of that shit it sounded he didn't say that uh, he said, we need to be constantly alert to changes in the nature of the illicit drug market, especially as these changes sometimes bring new health complications or challenges. A government spokesperson said, we are aware of the threat from xylazine and determined to protect people from the threat posed by this drug and other illicit sub other synthetic drugs. We will not hesitate to act to keep the public safe. Following advice from the Advisory Council of the Misuse of Drugs, we intend to make xylazine a Class C drug. 
So there we go. What a load of bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, just uh, legalize it. You wouldn't have these problems, yeah, like you said. It's so fucking simple. You know, and they're saying here, we are aware of the threat and we want to uh, make sure. That, what, what did he say exactly? We, we, we will not hesitate to act to keep the public safe. So legalize. Properly regulate. <laughs> yeah. Probably Don't hesitate. Do it. do it now. Get it done, and then people won't take these. They won't have to take these ridiculous risks, would they? You know, do, do people have to be afraid of vodka? No, they don't. They know it's going to be clean, good vodka because they're buying it from reputable sources. But remember when it was illegal and people had to go buy moonshine and people were fucking dying? You know why that stopped? Right. Because you made the fucking alcohol legal. You know, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like. These people are supposed to be there for our fucking best interests and know what they're doing. But they, they, they've got no fucking idea, man. And people die as a result of their stupidity and greed. And they they must see that the only way to fix this is to properly legalize and regulate. They must see it. They have experts, man. They must see that that's the only way forward. And they choose to ignore it. And as a result, people die. Fuck. Anyway. Yeah, that's all I have to say about that. All right. A little mini Mackie rant there, you know? It just frustrates me so much, man. It, it, it's so clear that there's some ulterior motive going on. It, it, it's just so fucking clear, and they try and pretend it isn't. And if you say that, you get made out to be a fucking conspiracy theorist. But what's the other excuse? What's the explanation for it then? They, they, they're obviously doing something. They're obviously keeping it legal for a fucking reason that serves their best interests, because it definitely doesn't serve ours. Right. Mm -hmm. It's fuckery, man. It's fuckery. These people are in charge. They ain't got a fucking clue what's going on. But let, <laughs> let's move on to the next article here. Cannabis may be banned at Germany's Oktoberfest. Marge, what, <laughs> what's this crazy talk? I thought they were going to be inclusive well, of the... I, saw it. I was yeah. like, that seems absolutely ridiculous. But there's always one dude. <laughs> Very yeah. true. It's probably it's just rain. one guy, you know. <laughs> it's got a fucking rain on the parade. You know, cannabis uh, may be banned, but it won't be. <laughs> this comes from Forbes as well. Cannabis may be banned at Germany's Oktoberfest despite legalization. The German federal state of Bavaria is considering the possibility of restricting cannabis use at the famous October Oktoberfest following the legalization of cannabis for personal use. The government aims to restrict public spaces for consuming cannabis at events like Oktoberfest by establishing cannabis-free zones, as first reported by the DPA, which is the German Press Agency. Oktoberfest in Munich is the world's largest beer festival, featuring traditional Bavarian music, food, and the consumption of about 6 million liters of beer. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's a, that's lot, a of lot of beer. The festival spans a two-week period, culminating in the first Sunday in October, but with the legalization of cannabis for personal use in Germany that also entered effect as of April 1st, states like Bavaria are attempting to restrict consumption in public spaces despite the new legislation, allowing consumers to use cannabis following specific rules. Although no final decision has been made at the cannab or cabinet meeting on Tuesday, as specified by the head of Chancellery and the state minister of Bavaria, Florian Hermann, Various ministries are current, currently exploring additional restriction options for cannabis. The aim is to make it uh, make consumption less appealing, with the decision likely to be made next week. Less appealing? Why? I don't know. Yeah, Does, I are they so. worried that people will drink less beer? <laughs> yeah. I, oh I yeah, maybe. Actually, Fuck. I don't know. I think <laughs> cannabis and beer go together so well for me, though. Yeah, it depends on how. If you have a lot of beer. And the, and you don't if you don't smoke very much, right? And you've had, I mean, let's say three German beers. I would say five pints, but it's probably like three fucking tank of beers in Germany. Yeah, you know, those, you, those, they have yeah, leaders, those glasses. Man. You know, you, oh, you yeah. get drunk on that shit, and then you hit some weed, hit a bong, man. Damn, it's lights no. out. Yeah, you got to go weed first before the beers. Uh, mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it, it. It seems to work better if if you're gonna mix them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang. So they're saying to who's this uh, Marcus Soder, uh, minister, president of Bavaria and leader of the, oh, here we go. The Christian social union in Bavaria Ooh, who opposed okay. cannabis legalization <laughs> in Germany. Yeah. See, it's one guy said on, 
The Bavaria won't be a quote unquote stoner's paradise and announced that the state will apply cannabis laws restrictively. On March 25th, one week before cannabis officially became legal for personal use, Bavaria released a catalog of fines related to cannabis consumption in public spaces as the authorities in the federal states are now responsible for imposing fines and violations of the law. Um, in addition to Oktoberfest, where beer gardens and outdoor areas of restaurants might be off limit, limits for cannabis, local authorities are also evaluating implementing this restriction in Englischer Garten, English Garden, one of Germany's most. Oh my God! And largest parks. You might as well just say English Garden, Englischer Garten. Is it? <laughs> you might as well, it's the same. But she's <laughs> but she's over there in Germany. She's got That's a joke right. for it right now. Oh yeah, I just mean it like the article <laughs> itself. You know, yeah, just know, Germany right? in general. Just say English Garden. Just or you could <laughs> leave the German and people would still get it. I'm pretty sure, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so Herman also said that he promised municipalities the authority to establish cannabis free zones as the new German cannabis law lacks specific rules for public festivals. However, many organizers have emphasized the necessity of prohibiting cannabis consumption near children and young people, especially considering that folk festivals are family celebrations. Is Oktoberfest so, a family celebration? Did you know what you're going to have kids mm. around all those drunk people and that's know. okay? Well, I know in the States it would not be allowed, but uh, I don't know. Europe has got different rules sometimes. I don't really know what the rules are. Well, do, do they mean, serve learning... food? That's just a real question is do they serve yeah. food at these, mm -hmm. these things? Because a lot of times that is the uh, criteria whether or not you can have children there if there's an eating to eat. It's it's interesting, though, because here uh, you can drink publicly. Yeah. Like people can be on the the subway with open alcohol. Uh-huh. So and wait a minute, and I read something of obscure law on the books, and I believe it was Germany that had the law, and it said that, uh, and, and I, it probably is it's one of these books laws that's not even looked at anymore. So stupid is something the fact that you're allowed to have one beer while driving, but only yes, one. Yes, that is true. It's still oh, true. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, I read that the other day, and I'm like, that can't be real. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. She was telling me that the other day, but it doesn't say how big of a beer though. The beers here are, you can get pretty <laughs> bottles of beer. Well, when's this Oktoberfest? <laughs> yeah, not till October, Mackie. Oh, no, it's in October? Gosh, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I know, but when it's spelled the way it's spelled, you might. You so, might be... yeah. They're worried about consuming cannabis at a festival around children, but you can have a liter of beer in your car driving and drinking at the same time, and that's not an issue. As long as the kids in the back in the, in the correct car seat, then yes, you can drink that beer while driving. Oh, yeah. you can also have your whole family on the subway or on the trains and just have open alcohol and drink. Yeah, but and there's no limit cannabis. there. They are worried about cannabis. We're not going to smoke cannabis on a subway around kids. I'm sorry. I just I know I know my community. Most people are not going to do that. Mm -hmm. you know? But smoking's a little bit different from um, you know, because. It, it does produce a lot of smell and it's smoke. So people don't want to smoke around their kids regardless right. of it, regardless yeah. of it being a cigarette smoke, pipe smoke, tobacco smoke, or cannabis. Right. You know, people don't want people smoking around their kids. And that's understandable. And though the effects of alcohol are shit, you don't want drunk people around your kids. People wouldn't, you right. know, it's not going to interfere with the kids when somebody's just having a beer sitting a few seats down no. on a train, you know? No, I hear you. No. And it, but it's so prevalent. Like at first I was like, oh, this is interesting, but like everybody does it. Mm -hmm. And you can be 16 to buy beer here. <laughs> Damn, yeah. this Oktoberfest it's... sounding good, man. This sounds like a place I want to visit. <laughs> right? It says here, yeah, uh, got chicken, sausages with potatoes, <laughs> sauerkraut, and cabbage. It's like, okay. Oh, I'm in. Let's if, you, if you let oh, the weed happen, if you get the weed, yeah. if we're allowed to have weed there, then I'll be there. If not, then I'm going to leave it till next year. All right. Well, we just <laughs> need to start our own Oktoberfest for stoners, you know, that way we right. can allow it in mm -hmm. on, a, on our festival. So there's yes, just one last thing I'll read here. It says the announcement of a potential restriction of cannabis use at events like Oktoberfest face criticism on social media, unsurprisingly. Users point out the perceived hypocrisy of banning cannabis, which has been decriminalized and legalized for personal use at an event where alcohol is widely consumed. This mirrors a broader debate where an alcohol is considered far more dangerous than cannabis. Critics highlighted that state authorities allow the large-scale use of alcohol while imposing restrictions on cannabis despite its legalization for 
or yeah, legalization for personal use. So there's a bit more to the article, but essentially nothing's been decided yet, but it does seem a little, a little hypocritical because yeah, people will be consuming well, a total of, what was that? Six million liters of beer. Exactly. That's, that's so. Much and you, you can tell that this was like a, an article written in the USA because if it was written in the in the UK, we usually have these stupid measurements. Like, it would have filled three Olympic sized swimming pools, <laughs> but they legitimately just said fucking six million liters or whatever it was. You know, they gave us an know, actual the measurement. Is, the states is pretty good for that too. All right. I okay. Think. It isn't just us. I like to exaggerate in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not just you. I saw a TikTok <laughs> video the other day where a guy was shopping for toilets at Home Depot, and one toilet you could flush like three bo- uh, three <laughs> billiard balls or something like that. And what's the point of this? Wait a minute, what is he have to flush? I don't want to know. Don't don't. And, and the other toilet was saying, but this one you could you could flush like a whole bucket of golf balls. And he's just Jesus. Like, you know, that's a beautiful I segue. I know you know, what it's for. And so when you get raided, you can take your whole jar of weed one time, jar it everything, go boot gone. You know, like, it, why are you using those kinds of metrics. That's right. <laughs> I mean, billiard balls. It's a beautiful segue into one of the articles, which isn't coming up yet, but we're, we're discussing it a bit. But, you know, what's he passing? Kidney stones? <laughs> you know? <laughs> The size of billiard balls. Don't worry, right. you can flush three massive kidney stones down this motherfucker. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, monkey, you have one here. Expert details why cannabis won't be legalized in Australia. Legalized right. in Australia as countries around the globe continue to allow the drug. Yeah, I saw this one and I read it. And now it, it oh, it's important to me to read this because you know, we've heard recently some really promising news that Australia was closer to getting to legalization and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then of course you see this come up. So I always like to put the negative with the positive here. Let's see if anything in here sounds familiar, you know? An expert has weighed in on the real implications of legalizing cannabis in Australia, explaining why we won't follow in the footsteps of other nations. Okay, co-director of health and policy at University of Sydney's Bain and Brain and Mind Center, uh, Professor Ian Hickey has revealed why Australia is extremely unlikely to join countries across the world and legalize cannabis. Mr. Hickey said that the increased potency of the product is just one of the reasons he did not believe Australia would legalize recreational use of the substance, pointing to the fact that cannabis was five to 10 times stronger in 2024 than it was in 1980. That's real progress, guys. It's progress. We heard this before anywhere, you know, ultra strong (laughs) cannabis. Mind altering super skunk. I think this guy just basically Googled every other country and he's gonna he's gonna basically try and use all of these these points now to try and drive his point home. First one, too strong. That's bullshit. I'm sorry, it is. That's one of the issues out there about cannabis at uh, use at the moment. Stronger doses, younger people using more and being exposed to it more than ever, he said on Thursday. Now wait a minute. Younger people using more or being exposed to it more than ever. Now, exposed to it more than ever, I get that when it's legal because it becomes part of your life. Kids don't even notice it. It's just there. It's always been there. But wait a minute. You know, it just, hmm. Younger people using more. Haven't we had study after study after study that says when after legalization events, the teen usage drops all the time. And mm-hmm. the, kids, the kids don't want their, their, their grandpa's pills anymore, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the way it is. So they're using that one as well. Said so the professor highlighted the increased exposure was a major issue for young people's mental health as concerns over cannabis-induced psychosis or schizophrenia mm. continue to grow. I Ridiculous. think we would have gone over the psychosis thing over and over and mm-hmm. over. And we've shown time and time again that psychosis rates have remained static over the past century. It just mm-hmm. it can be easily be shown. Cannabis is involved in approximately 50% of psychosis, schizophrenia, and schizophreniform psychosis cases, especially in young men. Now, I don't know where he get this information from. He yeah. did not cite his source there. He just made a statement. Yeah, he did not. He's just spreading numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 50%. That's a, that's a big claim, that is. You should have to back that up. I think he should. 50%. Yeah, come on. It says there is 30 years of research now well established that cannabis is a major risk to psychosis episodes, Mr. Hickey said. I still haven't seen this data. You know, we've talked to to Peter Grinspoon, uh, Bonnie Goldstein. We've talked to many people, professionals out there, and they keep saying the same thing. Psychosis is static. Schizophrenia, that's not increasing, even though cannabis became legal. 
the That's commentary right, floated the commentary floated that the government are inclined to legalize cannabis so they can fix or gain tax revenue. Mr. Hickey argued that legalizing cannabis based on this expectation would be a really bad idea as the benefits have not been demonstrated in countries like Canada where the illegal market continues alongside the legal market. Okay, should we dissect that a little bit right there? We know that the, the illicit market will always be there, but we've also noted that if the, lit, the legal market can in some way parallel the illicit market as far as prices and offerings and products, people will go to the legal market. The, the reason that they go to the illicit market is because it's cheaper or there's products out there that they can't get in the, in, in the dispensaries. Exactly. So again, it's just, again, twisting the facts around here for mm -hmm. Australia. Consumption goes up and the number of young people who suffer the consequences go up. What the heck is he meaning with this? Wow. I think in Australia, there's a really big difference between legalization, which I think will not happen here, versus decriminalization. The police, uh, not having the police running around hassling people about small amounts of cannabis use. I think it's very unlikely that any of our states or territories will actually go the whole hog legalization. The health outcomes would be so bad, and the projected tax revenues are unlikely uh, to result despite of the hype it's all about. With, uh, with a wave of education surrounding the possibility, possible psychiatric side effects of cannabis, Australia has seen a decrease in the usage amongst its younger population, something that Mr. Hickey warns could be jeopardized by legalization. And uh, just for those uh, who are watching on YouTube now, and those who are not watching on YouTube, join us live sometime on Sundays at 9 o'clock GMT. And what was it, 4 yeah. p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific? Come and join us, and then you'll be able to see these pictures and stuff. Because if you see on the screen right now, that's the guy, and you can tell he just looks like a proper dickhead. <laughs> I don't, I don't judge a book by a cover, but anyway, yeah, he's got a look on his face, though. I have to, yeah. I have to go with that. Yeah, yeah, he looks but like again, a you know, just well, saying. Just yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Muggy. Yeah, you were saying younger people have proved rather smart in Australia. Their use of cannabis has been actually declined over the last fifteen years as part of education about its brain effects and mental health effects. The last thing that the world we need right now is to increase the availability or to make it more popular to uh, and have more people to end up in bad situations. So I think Australia is going to be smarter than Canada and some of the United States who have gone down this path. Well, screw now, you, buddy. There you go. Thank you. That's, that was my reaction. And that is one reason I had to put this on here because it was filled with so much misinformation here. And he, he's basically quoted everything. He, he has not done any new research. And he quoted all the bad things that all the other articles said and have all been misproven and disproven. Mm -hmm. so, there was mm -hmm. another quote earlier that you that you missed, and he talks about one of the oh. issues right. out there about cannabis use at the moment, stronger doses, younger people using it and more uh, using more and being exposed more than ever. In Canada, where cannabis has been has been legalized, this is a huge problem. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's correct. I, I think, think most of the studies. About didn't the yeah. studies mostly in Canada say that the teen usage down and kids that are really aren't going for it as much anymore? You know, it's like after each of these points that he's made, there should be a little asterisk, you know, one, <laughs> two, three. And then at the bottom, you go to the bottom. Here's the source for what bullshit I'm spitting. Here's the fucking source. Here's the source. Mm -hmm. And this is from Sky News. Cue a large amount of sarcasm. This is a reputable news organization that should do these kinds of things. You know, but really, they're not. They're a pile of shit, man. All their news articles are shit. You're just saying. But yeah, yeah the we read them out anyway. <laughs> it was nothing more than a pile of alarmist BS out there to try mm -hmm. and scare scare people into going out there and trying to vote against this stuff. Everything mm -hmm. that this man has said has been disproven and his facts are warped. And that's the high on homegrown opinion of this entire piece article right here. Australia is in better shape than this guy thinks. Yes. Australia, you all deserve right. this. Mm-hmm. It will. It'll get there. It'll get there. But let's um. Man, there's this one from Border Telegraph. Is some UK news organization I haven't heard of before. Uh, this is uh, Galashiels. I don't know. Anybody want to take a shot at pronouncing that word there? You, you how you pronounce this place properly? Anybody know? Um, Shales. Galashiels. Where is this place located? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll put it, it on the screen. I'm not, everybody oh. should be seeing it on the screen now. Galashiels. Don't laugh, Mad Dog. Come on. <laughs> Mad Dog in there <laughs> with his laughing emojis. But yeah, uh, Galashiels 
five appear in court over 2.3 million cannabis haul and i'll apologize in advance because you if you're a regular listener of the show you know by now how really bad i am at pronouncing names okay we I'll all do, are yeah we're that's famous it. for it, man. It, it yeah it's it's part of the show we mean no offense we <laughs> just we just admit that we're no good at it that's right five men have appeared in court in connection with the discovery of cannabis with an estimated street value of more than 2.3 million in gala shields please read it. that street i want to find where that street is is i think it's going to be a small town in the uk somewhere <laughs> well i, I mean they always say it's 2.3 million in cannabis uh, mm -hmm. that's a hell of a lot of weed man that's yeah, yeah not really <laughs> you know in comparison in comparison to what's been found before yeah 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 and in comparison on what's completely legal to be grown by the government and their friends in this country as well it's mm -hmm. nothing uh police raided two empty shop outlets because all the shops are closing here in the uk because it's going through a huge recession they're not telling you about uh <laughs> <laughs> sorry police raided two empty shop outlets in channel street on tuesday we have a CH, everybody. You know how it is. Tuesday. 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 Channel Street on Tuesday morning when they discovered a large cannabis cultivations. Or when they discovered the large cannabis cultivations, okay? Both buildings, formerly occupied by Woolworths, which has closed down a few years ago because, you know, big recession, and Ladbrokes, which is unusual because the betting shops are popular on the high streets, are positioned opposite each other in the main shopping thoroughfare in the borders town okay at shalkirk sheriff court on wednesday five men faced charges of being concerned in the supply of a controlled drug 63 year old go on geezer <laughs> you know still committing huge crime like this at 63 <laughs> uh 63 year old bezim velija petrit musta who is 47, 35 year old Spetim Halili, Jonas Melkani, Melkani, sorry, who is, I said sorry on that last one because, you know, that's the only one I butchered, who is, <laughs> who is 26, <laughs> and 20 year, 20 year old Laurent Bay made no plea during the private hearing and the case was continued for further examination. They are all described as no fixed abode, which means that they were homeless. Uh, the men were all remained in custody and are due to appear in court again next week. A huge haul believed to be the biggest ever seized in a single day in the borders uh, and is almost double the 1,400 plants valued at 1.2 million unearthed in a derelict mill in Selkirk last year. So there we go. There's five guys who have been caught growing a substantial amount of cannabis in this small town in the UK. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, when I see things like this now on this scale, I think this is like an industrial scale, which is legal in the UK. You right. can go get a proper if, license. If you pay the right, uh, what is it? Um, what, what word should we use there? Bribe, I guess? Uh, no, no, that's definitely not the right word. Monkey, okay, you know? we don't want to get sued. Do you want to get bad. sued? You know? um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the right campaign contribution. Oh, that's right. Uh, right political contribution. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, and this is industrial scale. This is completely legal. But, of course, these guys didn't pay the necessary fee to the necessary people. That's a fair way to put it. How about that one? The necessary fee to the necessary people. These guys were not allowed to run a legitimate business. So it's they... amazing how that necessary fee varies depending on the individual too. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. There's, all of that stuff is so off. So as a result, uh, they use our taxpayer money to get their gang, known as the police, to go and shut down any operation <laughs> that competes with their friend's business. And they came to get these guys because they were potential competition to all the people who's making money growing medical cannabis in this country. That's 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 like how I fucking see it. Man. Yeah, you know? like uh, to the top, the, to the <laughs> top of the government, organized crime at its finest. Absolutely fucking shocking. It, I mean, uh, these guys really are doing nothing wrong, man. I don't see anything about the the electricity being robbed. They're growing a shitload of plants and shit. 
sure right. we've been kind of programmed in our society to think that they're doing something wrong but they're not they're not are they really they're just growing a few fucking plants it's not their fault yeah. it's illegal they were trying to set up a legitimate fucking business it's a nice house did you see a house isn't that what's in the picture i don't know i didn't see oh yeah oh. wow is it in there I, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just taking pictures of random fucking castles. <laughs> yeah, it's a little really? castle. Yeah. Oh no, no, it was in week. it was in the betting shop, wasn't it? It was in the Ladbrokes and the uh, the Woolworths. Oh. Yeah. But this is this not castle. So grown? no, it's just like a legitimate <laughs> random picture of a castle. No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Clickbait. <laughs> you know. It's probably the, the only thing that's known in borders, this town. It's like, you know, the place with this castle. Like, oh, right. that place. Oh, yeah. Glass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I the like big... how you have to say it of no fixed abode. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds so nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always fuckery, you know. It's, it's a difficult one. But that's the way it is, man. Apply for the license, you know. <laughs> Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But what do we have next? Marge, we've got a health one. I do. I do. Yes. Let's Does, see what uh, this is all about. And this is from Medical News Today. So I have no idea if that's a legitimate uh, publication or not, but we're going to do it anyway. Does cannabis <laughs> increase or reduce the risk of kidney stones? Because if you didn't have enough to worry about when you're smoking weed, according to the mainstream media, this comes out. I imagine when a paranoia kicks in now, you're like, what if I've got kidney stones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have psychosis and kidney stones. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Right. Shit. Oh, God. <laughs> well, what are kidney stones? They're hard masses that can form in the kidneys and cause pain. While evidence notes that smoking is a risk factor, no research suggests that cannabis uh, cannabis increases the risk of kidney stones. So, so far, so good. Kidney stones describe hard deposits of dissolved minerals that can accumulate in the kidneys. If the stones become large enough, they can lodge themselves in the urinary tract, causing pain. Without removal, they can lead to complications, such as infections and kidney damage. Cannabis is a plant containing compounds that may have medical medicinal benefits, as we all know. Uh, the most abundant substances are CBD and THC. People can use the plant in a variety of ways. Okay, yada, yada, yada. We know all this. Well, smoking tobacco can increase the risk of kidney stone formations. No evidence suggests cannabis smoke, smoking cannabis increases the risk. Instead, some research suggests it may actually lower the risk. So smoke up, everyone. Mm. However, more research <laughs> is still necessary, as it always is. Um, kidney stones are a common health problem. Evidence notes that smoking can greatly contribute to the risk of kidney stones. A 2023 analysis and a presentation both suggest smoking tobacco increases the risk of kidney stones due to increasing concentration concentrations of cotinine in the blood. So if you're putting any kind of tobacco in your joints, maybe consider not doing it unless... The cannabis uh, reduces the risk enough that it makes it what neutral. <laughs> you know, it's like oh. this. This is like a genuine clickbait article. You know, the only reason why we have it is because it says in the title, "Can smoking weed cause kidney stones?" And then, like in the first paragraph, like, "No, no, it doesn't really." But tobacco, you know, tobacco, yeah, right. that that can cause kidney stones. And it's just like you've just dragged us in here with the word weed to tell us about how fucking tobacco's bad. Jesus. Right. Well, tobacco is bad. I think it is. It is indeed. Is it? Yeah. So stop smoking <laughs> and reduce your risk of kidney stones and then smoke more weed and further reduce your risk of kidney stones. Yes. That's this, uh, what... This is not medical advice. Says. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is not to be misconstrued with any kind of medical advice. I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on the internet just so we're all on the same page. You do have a lab coat on though, right? Always, but... Of course. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Just sit here with a lab coat and a stethoscope. People. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, what else does it say here? A 2020 article, note, uh, article notes that there's little guidance or evidence regarding the effects of cannabis use as a, on kidney health. However, it adds that possible links between smoking cannabis and kidney disease are more likely to relate to tobacco use. It further mentions that using cannabis in other ways, such as oral consumption, may avoid possible risks health risks 
also uh, something that we probably realize. Um, what's it saying? Kidney stone prevention tips and risk factors, not drinking enough water. So if any of you out there aren't staying hydrated, then you probably should because you could be increasing your risk. A, a, diet a diet rich in protein, sodium, or sugar, having obesity, previous surgery on the intestines, personal family history, polycystic kidney disease, taking certain medications, health problems that may cause substances such as calcium to build up, uh, health problems that can cause swelling in the digestive system or joints. These are all things that can cause kidney, kidney stone risk factors. Mm -hmm. Nowhere does it mention... <clears throat> they say cannabis tobacco or there. cannabis actually in this list but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even alcohol no, no, no. yeah maybe it's the one thing finally that alcohol can't be blamed for <laughs> kidney failure <laughs> yeah that's right that's right but it'll cause all kinds of other failures so mm -hmm. can cannabis benefit health i think we already think that it can because they're talking generally basically you're right this was a pretty clickbaity article that um is saying does cannabis increase or reduce the risk of kidney stones? And they answered it literally in the first paragraph. <laughs> the answer, probably not. There you go. We're yeah. done. You know, the yeah. is I just written at yeah. the top line, like, ha ha, got you here, but no, off yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Medical News Today, for the thorough uh, medical reporting. But that's <laughs> one thing they're not blaming cannabis on. The medical establishment is not suggesting there's a link between kid your kidney stones and your cannabis use. Nice. But you should quit smoking anyway. Tobacco. Yeah, right. yeah. 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 And, you know, stay properly hydrated, man. It's important. Always. Yes. Water, not beer. It's just so we're clear. Why not beer? What, we... <laughs> well, you, you could alternate well, water, beer, water, beer. It's got yeah. water in it. Yeah, Gosh. it does. It does. There's, uh, yeah. You could try that and see what happens, but <laughs> there's no guarantees. Well, it is Oktoberfest coming up, so. That's yeah. right. Warming up for October. Yeah, gotta, oh, yeah, you need to warm up, that's for sure. If we're going to make it past that second. Uh, <laughs> warming up for Oktoberfest by drinking American beer. <laughs> 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 wow. Well. Yeah. Right, so we have the next one from Monkey. We have uh, the FDA heads. Uh, what's this one? You want to go through this one, Monkey? Yeah, it says FDA head says there's no reason for the DEA to delay rescheduling of cannabis. Yes. <clears throat> Interesting here, but, you know, it's, it's quite a long article. Let's see if we can find the meat of it here. Uh, the head of the Food and Drug Administration says there's no reason for the Drug Enforcement Administration to delay making a cannabis scheduling decision. FDA Commissioner Rob, Robert Califf also said that as a child of the 60s, it would be nice in my lifetime if we came up with a regulatory scheme for cannabis. I would have to say, yeah, everybody would say it would be nice if we could see this in our lifetime, if we could finally get some, you know, common sense going on here. At a hearing before the House Oversight and Accountability Committee on Thursday, Representative Nancy Mace, a Republican from South Carolina, pressed Caliph on the timeline for scheduling review after his agency under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services recommended that the DEA move cannabis from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 under the Controlled Substance Act. The timing of a regulation, just regulatory decision is something that would be up to the DEA, not up to me, Caleb said. There's no reason for the DEA to delay. Uh, they have to take in, all, all into account uh, all the regulations that are into play. Asked whether he expects FDA would assume additional regulatory responsibilities if cannabis is rescheduled, the commissioner said that it's a very complicated topic, especially given that it falls in an area where state regulation has been dominant. This is an area where I believe it would be better off if we had guidance from Congress about how to proceed, Caliph says. Medical cannabis is one thing where there's a medical purpose and it's proven through traditionally medical pathways, but when it comes to recreational purpose, there's no medical benefit in that case. It doesn't fall under our typical regulation. And this is pretty much what we're saying has happened with tobacco and everything else is it's not regulated as a drug because it's no medical benefit. So could cannabis go that way? Uh, Mace, who also recently discussed scheduling issues and the need for the GOP-controlled House to advance cannabis reform legislation, also raised concern, concerns about the prevalence of hemp-derived intoxicating cannabinoids, cannabinoids and the lack of regulations around those products. 
Without revealing too much about my age, I am a child of the 60s, so it would be nice if in my lifetime we came upon a regulatory scheme where whatever your belief is about the product, we can safely aware where the issues, safety issues are referred to. Well, you never get caught where you have to start over. Where the safety issue that you refer to are written into law so that we have a scheme whereby we can regulate it. I have to say it is kind of a twisty sentence anyway. Prohibitionist Representative Pete Sessions, a Republican from Texas, also addressed the cannab cannabis scheduling issue, stating that he believes that the FDA did not, did not base his assessment on scientific fact or realities about how cannabis has been abused in the country, in, uh, in our country today, abused and used. Now, that is typically straight right out of, out of a reefer madness, this guy. You know, it's crazy right there. Um, FDA's recommendation to reschedule cannabis completely ignores the realities of a drug that is causing enormous consequences of children and adults in our country, high schools, middle schools, and communities. I think, again, we have somebody here who is exaggerating slightly. Um, then he repeated talking points that he and other GOP lawmakers forwarded to the DEA administrator and Milligram using the agency to keep cannabis scheduled at Schedule 1 of the, of the Controlled Substance Act, including criticism of the revised review process the FDA used that involved a new two-pronged analysis instead of a five-factor review that has been used in the past. Opponents of cannabis reform argue this policy shift is evidence the FDA intentionally exercised more discretion to justify its rescheduling recommendation for political rather than scientific reasons. So they're just basically trying to bury uh, res rescheduling into more BS here. It's delay, 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 stall, stall, stall. Let me remind you that Schedule 3 does not put cannabis on the market in the United States. Kelly responded, with all due respect, I think cannabis is differentially differentiable from heroin and I, and I think cigarettes. He added that your colleague just gave you exactly the opposite viewpoint on cannabis policy referencing Mace's comments. Meanwhile, Oversight's Committee's Chairman James Comier said, thir said at Thursday's hearing that the FDA is putting its own bureaucrat bureaucratic priorities over the American people by refusing to regulate hemp products such as CBD unless it received additional authorization from Congress. Instead of using the existing authority of the FDA, is requesting new authorities and monies that it does not need, the chairman said. The, uh, this is the FDA putting down its own bureaucratic priorities over the American people who can benefit from these products. The FDA's refusal to, re re to, to regulate hemp products is creating significant confusion in the market and resulting in products with intoxicants that can be dangerous to Americans who use these products, he said. It has also halted businesses trying in good faith to enter the market while bad actors continue to thrive. Now, this is something that I saw actually on a, on a billboard driving across uh, uh, to head to Austin across I-10. I saw a billboard, and I'm talking full size, and it was very simple. It was a gray billboard with black writing. It says, THCA flower. Any quantity, no water, too big or too small with a website and a phone number. And this is on the interstate highway. And what they're selling is THC, a flower that has less than 0.3% THC, but it's loaded with THCA because in the farm bill, THCA is not illegal. And this is the new thing that's starting to happen across the South here. THCA is just not carboxylated THC. Mm -hmm. It right. has not been decarbed yeah. yet. Yeah. So, it, so you, but, I mean, you could essentially sell any because all argument. flour is THCA flour. It yeah, wasn't that the loophole in the farm bill or something we were talking about that recently? Yeah, this is a loophole. And this is a newer loophole that, that some of hmm. people are starting to exploit. The farm bill basically said, uh, okay, if it had, if it's in hemp, you can, you can sell it. So that's how, how they were using a loophole to do Delta eight and Delta 10 and, and even some mm. Delta nine, because I mean, if hemp has 0.3% Delta nine, I mean, if you take a thousand pounds of, of hemp and get 0.3% of the THC, you got enough to sell. Mm -hmm. And this is what they've been doing. But anyway, now I'm actually starting to see it's becoming very brazen out there. And, and so I actually think that they have something's going to give pretty quick because I mean, this is on billboards as you're riding down there. a sign basically saying, I'll ship you all the weeds you want. No amounts too big. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. And it's unregulated and untaxed. That's wow. unbelievable, man. <laughs>
Okay, the FDA's refusal to regulate hemp products, we went through that already. Later in the hearings, Comer again criticized the FDA for its failure to regulate CBD products, and the commissioner responded that under the current system, it's true that good players in the industry are penalized because of, of things that bad players do. In his concluding remarks, Comer asked what Careleth expects to happen with CBD regulation over the next year in light of his comments. It's Congress's decision to make, so we, we really look forward to, to, to work with you all as quickly as possible to come up with a regulatory pathway uh, that you think is uh, reasonable and enables us to take action, the commissioner said. Now, this is one reason why you haven't seen the FDA do anything about hemp, uh, because when they passed the farm bill, all of these products are technically legal the way the, the, the bill is worded. So the FDA doesn't want to get involved here trying to close people down because they're just going to take them to court and use their own law against them. And so this is why this, this problem with the farm bill exists and, and continues to be exploited. And eventually they're going to have to repass the farm bill or, or uh, amend it in some way to, to take these loopholes out of here. Um, Caleb said in a written testimony submitted to lawmakers that while the FDA has concluded it, it's lack, it lacks proper authority to implement regulations allowing hemp-derived uh, CBD, we recognize that consumers want access to these products. That is why the FDA announced that the agency is prepared to work with Congress on a new regulatory pathway that would provide access, safeguards, and oversight for products containing CBD in ways that existing pathways cannot, he said. FDA has concluded that a new regulatory regime is needed, which would which could encourage better information to inform consumers about their choices, Caleb added. In the meantime, FDA uh, continues to assess the evolving information based, based and built America, Awareness for America. Um, Representative Gary Palmer asked California whether FDA is actively monitoring the CBD use among Americans. The commissioner responded, that this is a similar area where harm reduction through a regulatory strategy is probably our best approach, and we need more research on exactly what the facts are. Again, what are they saying? We need more research constantly. All we ever hear. That's the best excuse mm -hmm. they can give us. We like to see a regulatory uh, pathway, but as, uh, as we talked earlier, the FDA is a referee, and we need a rule book, and you guys write the rule book. He's referring to Congress, and he's right. Congress writes the law, the FDA only enforces them. And like I said, they have nothing to enforce because the farm bill has basically made all this stuff legal and it's all now a court battle. Uh, the hearing comes nearly a year after the House subcommittee held its first of a kind meeting where members examined the impacts of FDA inaction on developing the CBD regulations. Last year, Comier said that his panel would be launching an investigation into the matter and he requested that that FDA turn over the documents related to its decision not to regulate the cannabinoid. Uh, even before the agency made that decision, the congressman expressed his intent to address the lack of rules. On cannabis, the commissioner's comments on, on Thursday came as Biden administration continues to tout its roles in issuing cannabis pardons and directing matter on cannabis rescheduling reviews, including a presidential proclamation declaring April second chance month. Now this hope that's that's all just politic and right there. He's talking about the second chance month is is he's referring to his uh, call for more um, cannabis pardons and to give these people a second chance. As we said before, that's not a whole lot been done there. It's more posturing than actuals. Uh, President. Uh, Biden also discussed the cannabis actions of his historic context last month during his Senate State of the Union. Uh, Kamala Harris also urged the DEA to finish a, this review, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And it keeps on going through this, all this stuff like that. It says in January, meanwhile, a co coalition of hemp industry organization called on the House Energy and Commerce Co Committee to hold a hearing addressing the ongoing lack of FDA regulations for products made with constituents of the product, products such as CBD. So long article, basically what it's basically saying is that it doesn't sound like we're gonna be moving on this anytime soon. And then using the same old, same old excuses all the time. Uh, moving on what, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on the rescheduling, descheduling, any of that stuff like that. It's just basically deadlock, it's political. And, and, and I can guarantee you that there won't be any major movement on it this year. Because uh, neither one, I mean, the Republicans will block it. 
will block any kind of a legalization event strictly for political purposes because it's election year. So in this situation here, it will not happen. There's no way you'll ever get two thirds of a majority to back cannabis in any way before the election. So this is a dead issue until the next administration, unfortunately. Wow. Well, yeah, boo. Oh, well. Wow. Boo hiss, yeah. But I mean, what are you going to do? We pretty much knew this. I mean, uh, I think we had covered it a while back saying if we didn't get cannabis legalization this year, we probably won't see it for the next at least six to eight <laughs> years. Yeah, it, Ridiculous. it was much more than 10. Yeah, it, it, it's just because Ending. of the way the political systems are aligning right now. I mean, I can tell you right now in my state, we have a governor in place that there is no way in the world he, this, this state will ever go legal if he has anything to do with it. Um, and there's a lot of states like that. You know, just we have governors who just won't let the states go forward. So if it's, mm -hmm. if it's not for the federal government, it's not going to happen. Well, the federal government needs to keep their fucking nose out of states business. That's what they need well, to do. That's the state's rights thing. And, you know, the federal mm -hmm. government don't like that too much, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Harry Aslinger, you know, I still want my <laughs> bat weed, man. He said, it, he said it's out there. I'm still looking. Um, twisted in the chat there. He, he says uh, he's ranting a little bit there. He, he, we, we all feel let down by our politicians, you know? Yeah. It's bad. I man. agree, Twisted. Three at a time, buddy. That's about it. And that's mm -hmm. supposed to make news, huh? Yeah. But if yeah. it's put in the right context, then it makes news and makes him look good. No, it's they're good all crooks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, nobody's was... going to do anything about it for right now. I, I must, Biden's afraid to do it because he's going to piss somebody off if he does it. And if he does it, uh, he thinks he's going to lose the election. So, I mean, this is not going to happen. Hey. Grandpa Joe yeah. is not going to do it. This is the problem with our politicians, man. They keep on doing things for their own best interests to try and mm -hmm. stay in power than doing things for the best interests of the population of the country they're supposed to lead, regardless of who is going to piss off. Do the fucking right thing, man. It's ridiculous. Especially when we have surveys that say that 70% of the American adult voting mm -hmm. population is in favor of cannabis yeah. legalization. You know, how and do you see that as a 70%? As a precedent? <laughs> you, you're ridiculous. But, oh, well, the people want that, so make it happen. I might not agree with it personally, but, you know, I'm just one person. Here's 70% of the population. So make it happen. But, yeah. Yep. I if, have a if feeling. If some butts were candy and nuts and all that, you know. <laughs> I have a feeling if you go back to prohibition times, alcohol prohibition uh, for the United States, probably uh, re-legalization of alcohol was or re repeal of prohibition was probably somewhere around 70%. Mm. So, yeah, we're right in that same zone right now. All right, so we have another one here. We've got, still got a couple more to get to. Let's quickly hit this one. And this is just the, you know, just the subtle way of me ranting again, but these guys are only criminals because... They are interfering with businesses that are actually legalized now, you know, and people make millions, maybe tens of millions of pounds and dollars from growing cannabis. But these these guys here, they're not allowed to. They didn't pay the necessary fee to the necessary person. So here we go. Police arrest international gang in six hundred and eighty six million dollar medical cannabis scam. Mm -hmm. uh, and was it a scam? I, I don't even know. Let's read through the article and find out. Uh, Madrid, April 13th, police forces led by Spain have arrested a gang which allegedly defra defrauded 645 million euros from victims in 35 countries in a scam centered around cannabis plants for medical use. Look at those fucking numbers. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. How have you taken that much money from this many people in that many countries? Facebook. Well, yeah, yeah. Facebook, Instagram. <laughs> Damn. I mean, I, I knew I they were bad out there, but that order, bad. I know a lot of old people don't order anything off Facebook. Mm -hmm. Well, this mm -hmm. one, if, if we get through the article, though, they weren't ordering here. They were just investing. No. All right. Yeah, we have a, a gang mounted a marketing system and attended international cannabis fairs to convince victims to invest in the system, the Spanish National Police said in a statement. It led the operation with the help of Europol. I think that's like, um, let's say, across the whole lot of Europe, it's the police forces, similar to the Fed over the whole lot of the states. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be the best way to describe it, but not as extreme, I wouldn't think. 
Uh, it led the operation with the help of Europol and police forces in five other countries. Nine suspects who have not yet been named were detained on April the 11th on suspicion of fraud in Spain, Britain, Germany, Latvia, Poland, Italy and the Dominican Republic. The business model offered by... This is not business advice, anybody. Don't get any ideas, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a lot of money, but don't be, don't be doing that shit. The business <laughs> model offered by this organization consisted of using the capital transferred from investors to develop partnerships to finance the cultivation of cannabis plants. Silvia Garrido, Spanish police spokeswoman, said, with this system, they promise victims a profit of between 70% and 168% per year, depending on the species of cannabis in which they invested. The, Nas the British National Crime Agency, which took part in the operation, said 180,000 people invested funds in Juicy Fields, which it called a notorious and elaborate Ponzi, Ponzi fraud screen, scheme. Mm -hmm. I keep trying to put that R into everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the NCA also said that a 42-year-old man appeared in a London court on April 11th for the start of an extradition proceedings. Luxury cars, hotel parties and music videos were used in an advertising campaign to promote the scheme. Police said and victims were taken to legal cannabis plantations which were involved in the scam. Police carried out raids in 2022 but did not say if any suspects have been charged with any offences. Police blocked bank accounts containing €58,600 and €116,300 in cryptocurrencies and €106,000 in cash was recovered. Properties worth €2.6 billion Euros were seized. Oh, this is pretty elaborate. Yeah. This was a, a real scam, actually. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, what, I understand that people are going after the green gold, thinking they're going to make money, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. A lot it of people have good lost to be a true. lot. Yeah, a lot of people lost a lot of money trying to invest in cannabis. Yeah. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And remember, there yeah. is no such thing as a quick buck. It doesn't exist. Damn. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's so easy for people to get scammed nowadays. It's just, you know, what prevents you getting scammed like this? Just grow your own at home, man. No, no, <laughs> just, <Right. laughs> keep to yourself. You just grow your own at home. But you, I mean, it would be tempting here. They had a, it was elaborate. They were taking people out to uh, to see fields and potential grows. Yeah, crazy shit, man. I'm sure this goes into more detail somewhere. It'll be interesting to know more about this. Maybe Netflix will make a documentary in the next couple of years. You know? <laughs> it reminded, it reminded me a bit of a fire festival when it's like luxury cars, uh, hotel parties, and music yeah. videos used in the advertising. And it's starting to remind me of that <laughs> Sam Bankman Freed guy. You know that guy who <laughs> recently be sent to prison for a shitload of fraud or something. Is that his name, Sam Bankman Freed? Which guy's that? I don't know. He, he had a shitload of uh, money and he, he, some fraudulent cryptocurrency stuff. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I do remember him going to jail recently. Yeah, for a long time, mm -hmm. and he, he was just like in uh, like relationships with numerous people, and just orgies at his house all the time, and parties, and you know, just living crazy lifestyle like that. Funny, yeah. You got to find the right right suckers, I guess. You know. Yeah, just always be skeptical, of everybody, and never exactly. invest money you can't afford to lose. This is not financial yeah. advice. We have no fucking idea what we're talking about, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Investing is like gambling. If you can't afford to lose it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck in your investments, man. Let's hope for the best. Especially with, <laughs> That's it. Especially with these uh, upcoming uh, economical times that could be happening. There's a oh, word yeah. that I put there on the uh, <laughs> on on this the thumbnail. Not going to say it, though, because we're not going to talk about that. This is the only live stream going on today where we're not going to talk about that. But here I am, sort of talking about it. We have one more news article. I wanted to try and end on a light note here. Sort of a light note, anyway. Um, we have Come Dine With Me, Winners, Part of Cannabis <laughs> Import Plus Gang. Have you guys seen Come Dine With Me, the Monkey? No. Have you seen this before? I have Mine? not, no. What is oh, it? right. Is it like a... Oh, no, you're so lucky. <laughs> to even know of it and have this shit take up a certain section of the valid space that is my brain is uh, just a tragedy. I'm telling you, this is a shocking TV show. Well, what happens is, 
right? <laughs> anyway, uh, there's four people are contestants, and they all go around each other's house for one day to have dinner with them. So, you know, each person cooks food at their house and then the next person and they go around in four and they all vote on each other. And at the end of the week, they decide who the winner is and, uh, you know, they win some money and stuff. There have been so funny scenes where, like, the guy has read out <laughs> the, the end results and his last, this other woman won and he was like, well, you are just absolutely disgusting people. And I... <laughs> <laughs> it freaks out man such a bad loser so check it out everybody it's, it's funny we just find the clips on youtube don't go watch full episodes you, you you had that cake bake monkey you mentioned what's that cake baking one for a great british bake-off oh, yeah that's it yeah yeah if you enjoyed that tv show then you might enjoy come dine with me because it's, okay. it's a similar kind of prospect but funny yeah, I've never really watched an episode, Scott, so I can't judge too harshly, but this kind of TV is something for me. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about a TV show. I just wanted to give you some kind of idea uh, of what that TV show was. All okay. Right. A terrible show says me, Bob, in the chat there. Yes, 100% agree, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell. But, uh, so let, let me read this. A gang including two winners of Channel 4's cooking show, Come Dine With Me, have been convicted for taking part in a plot to import cannabis. The plot involved to smuggle 58 kilograms, which is 130 pounds in weight, of the drug into the UK from the US, but was foiled after a theft at a London airport. Hmm, theft in London? That's unusual. Foiled. The, Met, the Met Police said. The Met Police involved in a theft in London? That's unusual. <laughs> uh, right, so Nicholas Pagny... Oh my gosh. Marge, would you please use your level of professionalism <laughs> to try and pronounce this word for me? Marge. <laughs> Pan Panayotu? Panayu Yoto. Panayoto. Panayoto. Panayoto, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry for laughing at your name there, bro. Sorry, we just think no, we can't pronounce it. Difficult one. I'm laughing at. No, but think about this poor kid when he goes to school and he's starting to learn how to spell his name. It must have taken him like two weeks longer than everybody else. Two weeks! Two weeks! Two <laughs> weeks! <laughs> you, know, you should have this name down already. It's like it's 12 letters long. <laughs> can't do it. Uh, anyway, Nick, this guy Nicholas and Eleanor Attard appeared on a professional version of the show in 2022 with their restaurant okay it was a little bit different from the usual one members of the gang were sentenced straight back to the the we think <laughs> members of the gang were sentenced at islesworth crown court on friday pan uh the got nicholas 43 was sentenced to four years in prison after he was convicted of conspiracy to supply cannabis while Atard 45 was given eight months prison sentence after she was found guilty of theft of suitcases and passports her sentence was suspended for one year so again she, she won't go to prison unless she breaks the law again in the next year of yeah okay. uh the met said they are involved in the plan with constant uh, these must be greek fellas right constantinos zavros <laughs> luke wildman and cobby hake police uncovered the plot when two women reported their suitcases and passports have been stolen after arriving in London on a flight from Los Angeles on the 11th of January 2023. CCTV inquiries led detectives to suspect to sorry CCTV inquiries led detectives to two suspects a man and a woman and a car registered to Atard. The <laughs> uh, officers attended Atard's home in Bronxbourne Hertfordshire two days later and arrested her and her husband Panayoti. Panayoti. That's probably correct. Panayoto. Oh. Which way? The second one? Uh, I don't way? know. I've forgotten both. <laughs> I'll pronounce it differently the third time. Evidence on Panayoti's phone pointed to a wider drug smuggling plan to steal the cannabis from two women recruited to import it by posing as customs officers. Wow. Uh, you see, now, let, let me. This is the thing, right, everybody? This can happen. Some people, they'll get involved in these big drug smuggling gangs, all right? And they'll be like, "Yeah, you just go to this country, you pick up this, and bring it back for me. I'll give you this much, though." But 
they are just going to like rob it all afterwards or you are just going to be one of them plants that have been sent there so they get the small bus but the big busts go through you know and all that shit people get fucked over in these situations man and this is what essentially happened to these two ladies they were bringing cannabis in from the from the u.s and these guys were going to go steal it from them damn even though they organized it they were just going to go rub it off and fuckery uh Anyway, where was the uh, three videos taken at the couple's Touch of Greek restaurant in Chingford, East London, taken a day after the theft, showed large quantities of cannabis. Three other people involved were identified in a WhatsApp group, Zavros, who was connected to the drug suppliers in the US, and Haik and Willem, who advised the gang on how to sell the drugs, the four said. Those also convicted are Konstantinos Zavros, 34... Uh, from Southgate was convicted of conspiracy to import cannabis, conspiracy to supply cannabis, and conspiracy to steal. He was sentenced to six years and eleven months in prison. Kobe Hake, thirty-one of Ashby, uh, sorry, uh, from Southgate, uh, was convicted of conspiracy to import cannabis, conspiracy to supply, conspiracy to steal, and possession of an imitation firearm with intent to cause fear of violence. He was sentenced to seven years in prison. Uh, Willen have thirty-two from Horsham was convicted of conspiracy to supply cannabis and conspiracy to steal. He is due to be sentenced on the 9th of May. So there we go. Oh. Yeah, it's just a craziness. You know, the bad bit here is that whole fucking trying to rob the people and shit, you know? But mm -hmm. Again, it's just saying that... They're not these guys, but... I don't think importing a shitload of cannabis into the UK should be a crime at all. You're just trying to set up a legitimate business, but, you know, they're just telling us that you're not allowed to do it. So do as you're told, you know? Right. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. So, you know, they went from the rags and riches story there, you know, the, but the opposite of richest rags, man, you know, it was on Come Dine With Me, <laughs> Living the Dream. <laughs> you know, it was on TV. Go, look at me, mum, I'm on the telly, all of that, you know, and, and now look at them in a prison cell. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of shit. 58 kilos as well, it's a lot. It's a lot, isn't it? But still. I don't know, there's... Just because it was bought out of the USA and into the UK, it becomes illegal now because when it was over in the US, it was fine. It, it shouldn't, like, it just makes no fucking sense to me. It, like, it's it, once you cross that line, you're not allowed it. Can't have it there. You can have it there, but you can't have it there. It's like, man, you, can, you either can or you can't. It's ridiculous, man. Well, I won't go on another rant. Uh, well, uh, what do you, you, you think about this one, Monkey? What's your thoughts on this? On which one now? Wait a minute. Uh, on this, uh, them getting busted. I don't know, man. Well, Just it, it, it's pretty underhanded. They set it up, and then they got to rip off their own people and things like mm -hmm. that. It's just kind of mm -hmm. crazy. I don't know. It's again, if it was legal and they could do it within their own borders and do it right and regulated, this wouldn't have ever happened. Kind of thing like mm -hmm. that. Uh huh. It just seems to be a running theme of the show, you know. If cannabis was properly legalized and regulated then we wouldn't have half of these fucking news stories to cover we'd be like these right. people get really high and contemplate their ex their existence and discuss their favorite <laughs> movies you know it'd be fucking cool stories but instead yeah. we get shit like this because we've got ignorant politicians running the show yeah two ig angry people sit down with a joint it? and then by the end of the and smoking the joint they're friends again so i mean come on that's just the way it happens yeah where's the good stories <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Sorry, Marge, what did you say? I said you really think we'd be getting stories like you just described. People no. sitting around talking about their favorite movies. <laughs> but if it leads, it bleeds. I mean, if it bleeds, it leads. Isn't that yeah. what you say? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Goddamn journalists. Yeah, uh, that's right. Craziness. They do a good job sometimes, man. We we do cover some good stories. You know, there's some good publications out there. And Marijuana Moment does good news. We report on a lot of their stuff. But um, yeah. what's the other guy from what Matt Lammers? Where's he from? It's the Strat can. Uh, no, is he from Marijuana Moment? I can't. Yeah, it is. Oh. Um, no, MJ Beers. That's the one, MJ Beers. Oh. Yeah, right. There's a lot of good sources out there, man. But always take the news with a pinch of salt because it's most likely True. gonna be bullshit. Yeah. yeah, a lot of clickbait out there. Yeah, who was it? Who, oh man, it was some some comedian was it George Carlin who was like, you no, know, you switch on the news, you just hear, you know, this place getting bombed, there's war here, there's bomb there, and then you step outside your house and there's like blue skies and birds tweeting and shit. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. so, you know, maybe, maybe we can just watch a bit too much news sometimes. And I think everybody should not watch the news for a week this week. All right, everybody. <laughs> Don't watch the news because it's just going to stress you out. I'm going to assure you. Mm, but, uh, we, we have some happen. forum news as well. Monkey. We do. Yes, we've got a couple of forum newsies here. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a, over at Percy's, we had a pretty much spontaneous grow challenge came up real fast. 12 for 12 grow challenge where it was just a photo periods, three liter pot. 12, 12 straight from, from seed germination all the way through. And that competition was won by Cookie Grow. So hmm. he's a uh, congratulations to Cookie. Congratulations. Custom five bowl revolving monkey pipe. So yeah, a bit of a nice. bit of a strange one, but that'll be going out to him there. Then oh yeah, that's also- a special prize. That is that's fucking it- go and check it's it out different. if you don't know what we're talking about there, everybody. Go over to the forum and have a look at that picture. That's an epic pipe. Yeah, it'll definitely be the conversation piece when you when you haul that one out there. People want to have a story about that one, though. But then we also had another uh, grow off going on. We had the Ali Bongo Connoisseur grow off, and nice. after voting and revoting and starting and restarting, we finally have a winner, and that one went to SG two. Congratulations. So congratulations to SG two on that one. Uh, so he'll be getting prizes from Ali Bongo on that one there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the last comp we had that ended just today ended in a tie. So we're not done with it. Yes, we had a plan of the month uh, vote this month, and we have two outdoor plants both grown in Australia that are tied for first place. So we'll be doing a vote off. We'll do a, a one week vote off on those two plants to see which one of them is going to take the title this month. But that was a good, it was a really good uh, plan of the month this month. We had a lot of entries and a lot of really nice entries too. Our growers are really stepping up the quality of what they're doing right now. So good Mm -hmm. stuff. Need to come by Percy's and see what we can do. Yeah, man. And we have uh, that 420 coming up. We're just discussing it before the show. Oh, yeah, we 420 is coming up, everybody. I don't know if you're aware, but that's a special day for stoners. This is like uh, when everybody gets high and shit. Yeah, I don't know if you, it's a new thing, Marge. New thing. Oh, yeah. 420. Yeah. And even though the date's on. backwards and shit. You know, for us, yeah. it's it's 204. <laughs> it makes no sense. But, you know, <laughs> well, 420. Yeah, it's, it's on the way and it's actually on a Saturday. So a lot of people are going to be chilling. So we're going to be doing giveaways and we're going to be doing it via a live stream on Saturday at our usual showtime. So, and, and we'll be doing the Sunday show as well, but we'll also do the Saturday where we're going to give away some prizes. But you can't just be a random person showing up to the stream. I'm sure many of our listeners are aware that that's a little pet peeve of mine. I like our prizes to go out to the community who supports us. So make sure you signed up to Percy's and be involved in the thread we're going to have for all the prizes and competitions that will be given away so people will be commenting over at purses and you might be able to win some prizes all right exactly yes. it's like that i think that's yeah. everything right that's all the news Pretty go much. to the outro yes so sign up to purses everybody jesus <laughs> jesus jesus free jesus for free for, free. for god's sake just do it man <laughs> Gosh, go to the outro. <laughs> did you sign up? If you wasn't a member, did you sign up? Did you pause it then before the music kicked in and was like, you know, I should quickly go and sign up to Percy's because Mackie said so. I should do that now because, you know, yeah, cool podcast and shit. I just went and know? signed up just now. Nice. Oh, nice. Welcome. Welcome yeah. to the forum, yeah, Monkey and yeah. Marge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure, everybody. It's been a, a good show. There are lots of fun stories covered there. We had some good laughs. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the like button if you're here on YouTube. And if you're not here on YouTube, join us next week for the live stream for on Saturday, man. On uh, what, what time is it? 9 p.m. is UK time, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. That's what it is, right? That's what we usually do. I yes. think so, yeah. In 2 p.m. Mountain Time? Would that be correct? I don't know. Um, you got to do a bit of your own work. Yeah, that would be right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Don't take be... my word for it. Check it out <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> we got four time zones. I got to go through them. It's like, okay, yes. Yeah, it's four Eastern, three Central, four, uh, two, mount, two Mountain, and one Pacific is when we start. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, man. Sweet. Now that's you know sweet. it all about the U.S. We're done. Join us.
And of course, head over to Percy to make sure you signed up over there so you can take part in the competitions, everybody. Make sure that's done as well. Uh, started early today. No grouchy. Oh, the times would have changed, mate, because you were down in there in ours. So the, the time zones probably changed. We're up to a... Uh, because uh, it's not GMT, that's right. It's BST now, isn't it? Fuck's sake, British summertime is our time zone. So bear that in mind, everybody. If you're doing a Google search of what times this show starts for you, make sure you're searching for BST and not GMT because it's summertime. Mm -hmm. Damn. It's frustrating, isn't it? That's why I say UK time. It just it's like confusing sometimes. But anyway, yes, thanks for joining us, everybody. I think that's it. Is there anything to add? Uh, don't forget to go and check out Margie's podcast and everybody. If you're new to the show and you made it all this way, thinking these guys are super cool, then you need to definitely go and check out Margie's show as well. You know, Margie, you want to yeah, tell great. people where they can find I that? That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Find yeah. it, everybody. <laughs> find it. It's also a super cool show. Get over there. Yes. And eat more cannabis. Grow more cannabis. Eat more cannabis. Listen to more cannabis podcasts. Find more interviews. Over on highonhomegrown.com and all of that. Yeah, download more content. It's all free. It's all free. And thanks for being here. We'll see you on the next one, which is Saturday for 4.20. Come in session with us, man. It's going to be a fun one. Stay high, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, Bye. everybody. See Bye. you later. Goodbye.